You ever get tired of your boring day to day life? I know I did. I mean, I do. I should say that I did. Then I decided to do something about it. You know, conventional wisdom says that you live your life, your parents die, and you get whatever they have left over. And that just wasn't good, for, good enough for me. So I decided to do something about it. So you know what I did? I want my money. So I went up to my dad and I said, I want what's coming to me right now. That's what my youngest son said. I want what's coming to me right now. And all I could think of was, I'd like to give you what's coming to you right now. I made him, and I can make another one, no problem. But he's my son, and I love him. So I gave him his money. And I told him, if you can make a better life anywhere else, then so be it. The next thing I knew, the next thing I knew, I was out of there. Kissed this old boring place goodbye. I had places to go, people to see. My son got lost. I love him, but he's no Magellan. I heard he got lost before he even left town. He had, he had to ask for directions four times before he left. You know what? No, no, no. It wasn't four, okay? It was three. And one of them wasn't even really my fault. I couldn't even attend to what the guy was saying. I mean, I just said, okay, thanks. And besides that, the only reason why I can't follow directions is because somebody never taught me how to follow directions. Look, the point is, I got out of there. And I started to live. I mean, I had more friends than I knew what to do with. I was eating like a king, wearing the finest clothes, and well, uh, the ladies, what can I say? Let me tell you something about the ladies. They were women, but they were no ladies. You know what, never mind. The thing was, life was good. Until... Until my son's money ran out. A recession hit our country, and there was really no work to be found anywhere. There wasn't any work to be found. I mean, I tried. I really, really tried. But there weren't jobs out there. I mean, eventually I found a job. It wasn't that. It was a manager position. <coughs> okay, it was an associate position. <coughs> okay, I was a bacon preparation assistant. Which is? I fed pigs. I hated my job. It didn't pay much. I didn't even have enough money to live at a place. You know, there were many days I didn't have enough money to eat. Sometimes I was so hungry, I would have loved to eat the disgusting scraps I fed the pigs, but I couldn't. They didn't let me. So with hunger pains, it's a constant reminder of how I spent everything my father gave to me. I lived in agony day after day. Day after day after day, I would sit and I would wait for my son to come home. My heart would ache, as only a parent's heart could for their child. But know this, I never gave up on him. I never gave up on my son. I knew that one day, one day it hit me. One day I realized that the lowliest of my father's workers lived better than I did. I mean, they had a place to live and food to eat. I didn't even have any of those things. So I wonder, what if he never comes to a census? What if he lets pride get in the way? No, nope. I will see my son again. Again and again, these thoughts ran through my head as I made my way back to my father's house. I, I knew what I would do. There's no way I would accept the handout and I couldn't expect him to take me back as his son. So I, may, I would ask him, Maybe I can work for him, you know, be a worker. Maybe, just maybe that would work. It would be the day that my son comes home. That's what I would tell myself every morning as I woke up. Maybe today I'm gonna to see my son walking up the driveway. I'm gonna see him come home. Home. That word means so many things. Comfort, care, security, love, home. I couldn't believe I was just a few hundred yards away from it. It was a beautiful day. I was sitting on my front porch, and that's when I saw him. He stood up out of his chair. He looked in my direction. He squinted his eyes to get a better look at me. And then I began to wonder, what if he doesn't take me back? What if, what if I get to him and he just looks at me and says, I told you so, I told you so. Some of you would just roll your eyes every time I mentioned my son. But I knew he would come back. I just knew. I just knew this was a bad idea. I knew I shouldn't have done this, and so I just stopped. He just stood there. He jumped. 
he jumped off the porch. I've never seen him do that before. He was like a little kid, excited over something. He was excited over me. So you know what I did next? I ran. My heart was pounding so fast, I just had to get to him. I'd never seen him like that before. He was running out with his arms just like this, saying, well, welcome, welcome home, home, welcome home. That's what I kept shouting to him, but I don't know if he could hear me or not. So I kept shouting it over and over, and I just finally got to him. And I just wanted to scoop him up like when he was a baby and hold him and let him know that everything was going to be okay. And all I could see was the tears running down his face. He was crying. Tears of joy. And you know what my son did next? I choked. I, I was nervous. I was excited. So I literally jumped. And you know what my father did? I fell backwards. He's a big boy. And then he hugged me. And he embraced me like only a dad could. I kept saying over and over again, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I don't deserve you. My son is back. Get him some clean clothes. Get him a meal. No, get him a feast. My son is no longer an orphan. All my hopes have come true. I guess it was hope. Hope that got me through the journey. Hope that got me through the miles. Hope that my dad would forgive me. Forgiven. All is forgiven. There's no shame. There's no guilt. I will never bring it up again. For my son was lost and now he is found.